Hey guys, it's Linux Next here, and in today's video, I wanted to go over some of the problems that Linux desktop um, is having right now, I would say. And it's not about, I would say, like the feature side of the desktop, it's more about the business side of things when it comes to the Linux desktop, you know, uh, getting funding for important features that we want in a Linux desktop, and only some companies can actually do that for a Linux desktop environment. Most, you know, Linux desktop environments that we use are mostly funded through through donations and stuff and I just wanted to go over some of more like the corporate side of where these corporate companies aren't really doing much to provide uh, you know funding to these desktop environments that we actually use on a day-to-day -day basis on the Linux desktop like ecosystem you could say and one of the the first problems that I have seen over the past like couple of months of using the you know, Linux desktop ecosystem and looking at all the corporate companies and all that is that like there isn't enough funding going around in the Linux desktop uh, ecosystem when it comes to using KD Plasma, uh, if you want to use GNOME, or if you want to use, uh, let's say, XFCE or Cinnamon. Uh, there's not a lot of just money going into these projects where these, you know, you, these people who run these desktop environments can actually fund and pay developers to stay and work for them. Uh, I've, I've heard that that's been a very difficult thing over the past, like, uh, podcasts that I've watched from Brody Robinson where he has like KD Plasma developers come on and they talk about you know how they can't pay for or, uh, developers to stay and pay them a yearly like nice yearly wage where you can actually make a decent amount of money while staying in that desktop environment and working on that project and improving it and not really um, having to have a second job or a third job to be able to do that so like i said before one of the the first problems is the funding in the corporate world of of linux where uh people like the linux foundation for example this big group of of investors who want to invest in different things in the Linux ecosystem, you could say, into different software or hardware side of things. And they want to invest in these things and get, get these uh, things done. And it seems like when it comes to spending money actually on like the Linux kernel, for example, it's only 2.3%. Like if we move to my desktop here, you can see that you know, this is their, um, uh, I think it's their uh, annual report for Linux Foundation. As you can see, the Linux kernel is at 2.3%. Well, if you look at other things like networking and edge, cloud containers and virtualization, we look at um, you know, some other big things here like AI, data analytics. Uh, there's a lot of money that's getting poured into these things. Uh, even things like the blockchain, like they're funding cryptocurrency, which is really weird because it's called the Linux Foundation, right? In the name, but Linux Foundation, and they only spend 2.3% on the Linux kernel. So with like system engineering is at 2.2%, Storage is at 2.2%. Open hardware is at 1.7%. Open source and compliancy best practices is at 3.5%. System admins at 2.4%. It's not looking that great when it comes to actually using Linux desktop and, and like the funding side of things. The, especially Linux Foundation specifically, they do not spend a lot of money at investment into the Linux kernel when it comes to you know certain things they want to do with the kernel, uh, new features they want to create, fixes whatever to improve on it so then you know other companies can have a better experience when using Linux either it be on server or on a desktop and like if we have a look here like I feel like the problem is like Linux Foundation shouldn't be called Linux Foundation anymore because they're spending all of this money on other things that sure may arrive at Linux at some point either it be some certain feature or some AI stuff but they don't spend specifically money on the desktop experience and they don't even really spend that much on the kernel either and you can have a look here look at their members and there's, there's some big companies here there's google there's dell there's panasonic there's cisco there's at&t toyota hoshiba sony microsoft samsung Qualcomm, Tencent, intel huawei ericsson meta like bloody facebook is on here so as, as you can see there is all of these types of different members um there's a platinum member gold member and they you know spend their money as they please on this type of stuff to you know whatever they seem fit for what
whatever technology they may need to uh, do. And it seems like a lot of it has got to do with cloud containers and virtualization, which is, that's perfectly fine. That's a, that's a good thing. Same with networking and edge, but we are trying to talk about the Linux desktop here where we need, we need help when it comes to funding these types of projects, uh, desktop environments that we use on Linux and where they just don't get enough funding. And that's where these big features that we want in the Linux desktop, like, you know, like HDR, for example, like Valve is helping out with that, um, which is amazing, but it's taking a long time for that feature to arrive um, just because I guess maybe there isn't enough money involved. There's not a, lot of, not a lot of developers working on it. Like, of course, there's a lot of developers, but I bet you so many of them are not being paid to actually like work on HDR specifically on like some desktop, like Kitty Plasma, for example. I bet a lot of their developers aren't getting paid to actually implement a feature like HDR or FreeSync fixes or Wayland problems, all of these things, um, they take a very long time. And I think that's because these developers aren't getting paid. There isn't enough developers either because most of the other developers that may want to work there, they get they actually go get a better job and they get paid even more. Um, so that's like one of the other problems. But yeah, Linux Foundation and lots of other corporate companies, they don't really like to spend a lot of money on Linux, it seems. They, they rather spend their money on you know cloud containers, networking, AI models and all that type of stuff, a lot of analytics, a lot of privacy intended things, even things like cryptocurrency. Like you're spending more money on cryptocurrency than the Linux kernel. Like which company that is a member is spending cryptocurrency? And as you can see here, here's all of the members, like the direct board of directors. So these are all the people that make that decisions. And there's a bunch of them from all different types of companies. They all make decisions on you know, what happens, right? And look, look at all these people, they're all business people people, right? Like they're all really trying to make money here. They're not trying to improve on something. They're not trying to say uh, that Linux desktop is better than like Windows, for example. So they're trying to improve on it and make it better. Um, that doesn't seem to be the case with the Linux Foundation specifically. They only like to spend you know, the Linux kernel system admins like Bailey over 2%, um, which I guess this also kind of makes sense because Linux is only at like, I think 3.7% worldwide market share and then on valves um hardware survey we are at like i think uh two percent or over two percent uh, which is really good to see like we're, we're continuing to grow actually no for the uh worldwide one we did lose about two point uh, two percent so um yeah, this does make sense that they're not spending a lot of money on linux specifically but i feel like it's one of these things where if you don't spend money on improving this stuff then no one's no one wants to use it because it's bad it's, it's trash it's not going to be you know, a good experience for the user so then there's no money being poured into, into it from any of these corporate companies um or like foundations and nothing really gets done in my opinion and this also comes down to like the software side of things on the linux desktop like getting software like uh, the adobe products or you know uh, better support for things like davinci resolve like installing that better and having better codec support for some reason i don't know why the codec support on davinci resolve is a bit weird on linux side of things Things. I really wish that was better, but also things like better support for Discord, because I know Discord, um, they have a long relationship with the Linux desktop version, and it's not being the best because they've usually just ignored the problems that have occurred or the uh, missing features that the Windows users and Mac OS users get, uh, which is really weird. It's just like, why make a desktop application in the first point if you're not going to bring the features that Windows and Mac OS have over to Linux. So you can pay for things like Nitro, for example, and get better quality when you're streaming. You, you can't really do that on Linux necessarily. Like you can do it, but it's going to be one, the quality is not going to be like 1440p because there's no hardware acceleration. So it's going to be super taxing on your computer and it's just a horrible, horrible experience. So that's one of the main, one of the other main problems with Linux desktop is when it comes to the so software. And I know other YouTubers like to say the same thing where these specifically uh, Pacific software um, aren't supported really that well on Linux or they aren't supported at all and um, that's just you know, one of the problems and I feel like this is something that will get fixed at some point I know Discord is working on you know Wayland support and Wayland screen sharing and hopefully they add more things because I think lots of these companies are seeing that Linux is growing uh, the desktop market is growing uh, very slowly when it comes to the gaming side of things and uh, when it comes to just like the desktop in general it is growing rather slowly 
but at a good pace that I think within like you know, the end of this year, I feel like Linux could be at like close to over maybe close to 5% market share on the desktop side of things worldwide. And then on Valve's hardware, possibly could be at like 3% or 2.5% maybe. Um, that's just hopeful thinking though. And if, it, if it's higher than that, then that's amazing. That means that these companies have a uh, better shot or actually like improving applications or bringing applications over to the Linux desktop. Either it be through native uh, packages or through something like Flatpak. Uh, that would just be amazing if that was possible. But that's just like one of the other main problems with the desktop is, you know, you got your funding problems with the corporate world, corporate side of Linux. And then you also have uh, the you know, support isn't really there necessarily when it comes to things like Adobe products or I don't know, Microsoft products. And then of course, there is alternatives to these things. Like, of course, you can use Caden Live. Like I use Caden Live for editing i use gimp and i know lots of people don't like gimp but um you know, I, I used it and it took me around like two two to three weeks to like fully understand how to use it and you know take advantage of its tools that it has available to make you know decent thumbnails but but that software is available for you so you know if you don't want to um force yourself to like run apps through wine or something uh, then these are like great alternatives i would say now if you do know that uh, i like to do a lot of community posts about uh, different desktop environments and what they're doing and one of the things that I add all the time is that you you know you should try and donate uh, to these these uh, desktop environments uh, I like to donate sometimes to KD plasma I've, I think I've given close to a hundred dollars to uh, the KD plasma project and I hope that they use that money in good faith and they, they you know continue to make good software and they bring good you know desktop support uh, but that's one of the profit uh, problems with distros is that they are a non-profit so basically they can only really get money through donations and contracted work um, as i've heard as like katie posma developers have talked about this where they they get contracted to do specifically uh, specific things from specific companies that need something to be done or added in the desktop but um like for example katie plasma only made two hundred thousand dollars last year which is just insane it is insane that they only made 200,000 because that is nothing when it comes to a you know, a business that they're trying to run basically as a non-profit uh, that's nothing that's uh, and they've got a lot of people uh, working for them I would say at least like 20 people probably working uh, not working necessarily some of them are probably not getting paid but some of them probably are getting paid for like bug triage and all that stuff but like I said 200k that really isn't much when it comes to you know KDE Plus you know bringing new features to us like of course we are getting new features and I've I've shown this with plasma 6.1 um, all the new you know, new refinements and new features that they're bringing and, and I've been using plasma 6.1 beta on arch and it's been running pretty great I've, I've gotten a decent amount of crashes that I have reported and they are resolved so that's really good to see but it's just one of these things where these distros are non-profit they don't make a lot of money in a year and as we've seen uh, also with the gnome project where they're struggling uh they've they've overspent what they had which they got like over like a million dollars a couple years back and they spent like almost all of it and like now they have to try and recoup their losses because they spent it way too quickly with the money that they got um so that's like another problem is um you know some of these non-profit desktop environments like gnome like kitty plasma um they they, they well, not kitty plasma but specifically with gnome uh you know they have they need to like calm down a bit and think about what they're spending uh, you know that's not my decision though they that should be their decision on what they want to spend um on the desktop environment but as you see here like Kitty plasma they only got two hundred thousand dollars last year which is really sad in my opinion because they deserve more and this brings me to my other point there is like an example with the um xyz uh security thing that got found in the kernel uh there is a lot of free contribution happening happening around linux ecosystem for a very long time now and this means that like things like big vulnerabilities can happen um, on the kernel side of things or anywhere necessarily uh, because these developers 
aren't getting paid to work on you know solving these problems and making sure that these vulnerabilities don't slip through um almost like what happened with the um x y you know vulnerability that happened in the kernel so what i do hope is that uh companies like red hat uh suso linux foundation even hopefully uh they do start to like spend a bit more money on linux because in the end uh, we definitely do need it as you know you got people like people are buying the steam deck now and that's running linux linux uh, even though it's immutable so like you know, valve has control over what updates get sent out and all that stuff and like i said it's immutable so it's read only so it's rather secure but when it comes to the desktop side that's also growing at a decent pace and i've seen so many people on right recently the past like two weeks uh, in discord also that's like you know, i'm trying to move to linux uh, you know, how do i set it up etc and since there's so many people i really do hope that these companies see that on the desktop side of things and they go okay we need to actually hire people we need to get paid developers and we need to start paying people to work on you know fixing vulnerabilities getting security up to snatch because i've heard also that like that when it comes to, to the security of the desktop side of things linux isn't really that great at the desktop side of things and i think it's it's also with like the kernel and it's because like um there isn't since the market share is so low on linux there isn't as many vulnerabilities that have been found necessarily uh kind of like with that xyz uh, backdoor that was found uh which was by a by a microsoft developer by accident when he was doing a test so, like that's what i mean like there needs to be people that need to be paid as you know uh, we're like oh security is so great on linux and it is but it's only because we have things like repositories for grabbing packages uh, um, you know, but there isn't a lot of people who are actually trying to attack Linux desktops. That's why I'm saying like the companies like Red Hat, like SUSE, like Linux Foundation, uh, maybe even some government agencies really need to start paying developers to work on security and, and try and solve vulnerabilities, which of course this is already happening. It's just like, it should be happening more um, because you know, Linux desktop is growing. It's it's growing, it's been growing at a decent pace now and it's, it's almost time where we we could have another vulnerability that happens and it won't be a good time when it comes to you know seeing that and, and seeing what happens and, and developers not really having the time they're not getting paid and it's just like it's just a mess in my opinion so in conclusion um i would say uh for the you know desktop environments like you know kd plasma like gnome uh, not really system 76 as much i don't know if they have a donation button if they do then definitely i uh, would definitely donate to system 76 as they're an amazing company and they've been working on the cosmic desktop which i will do a review on because it's a great desktop environment that i'm looking forward to um, but you should definitely you know donate to these these small projects like kde plasma like gnome like cinnamon like xfce like budgie uh you know, all these types of different desktop environments that you use or uh tiling window managers also i keep forgetting about that you know tiling window managers 100 you should be donating to them because they do so much work and effort uh when it comes to you know improving the desktop environment on linux that like i've been using it for two years now i think and i uh you know I'm, i am grateful that i have a really good desktop environment now i would say uh where i can use it day to day not have any big problems necessarily may, i may have like a plasma shell crash here and there uh, but that's because i'm running on a beta version of kd plasma so i'm expecting expected to get those problems but I would definitely donate to these desktop environments because it's it's just important that they hire people for like bug triage and feature improvements and we get the features that we actually want uh, because uh, they seem to be struggling or not necessarily struggling but you know like Betty only made two hundred thousand dollars last year <laughs> it's just like that's that's nothing for a business side of things that's that's really bad and that should hopefully Hopefully that improves and I've, I've heard over the podcast with like Brody Robinson for example some of the KDE developers who are in like the business side of KDE EV um, have said that like you know there is a lot of money coming in so uh yeah like I would I would 100% donate to these companies so if you have uh you know if you have enjoyed this video definitely uh give it a like I definitely would appreciate it and you definitely can subscribe to the channel I think we're at like almost 5,000 subscribers and I think we're pretty close
close to that uh, so thank you and thank you to my supporters i'll show a screenshot of them now and i will see you guys in the next video peace